So one objection to tongues, or one of the reasons it's so stigmatized, is because it's been mishandled in a way to say that if you don't have it, you're not saved. And so if that's the case, then what needs to be taught is justification by faith. The answer to many problems in Christianity is solved by teaching Galatians and Romans. <laughs> Just teaching justification by faith. Those who tell you that you have to preach, uh, have to speak in tongues in order to be saved aren't saved. Okay? Because why? They don't believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ for their salvation. They believe in speaking in tongues. So, if they're not saved, I guarantee that the tongues they're doing isn't real either. Okay? And yeah, demonic counterfeits exist and flesh counterfeits exist. But, that doesn't negate the power and the reality of the real thing. And I think one of the mistakes we make is to then go to the scripture to show how these unsaved people are mishandling the gifts of tongues. And well, they should be doing it with an interpreter and see this and that and this and that. When the root problem is they're not saved. And I think back to that little room where I received the gift of tongues 23 years ago. And those who were afraid. You know, there was one sister who... She was also afraid to be baptized. Um, and now, I, I, as I think about it, it's because and she was a friend of mine, she wasn't clear on justification, and I wasn't clear enough to help her in that point. I at least knew I was saved. I think she was still struggling with it, and so the gift of tongues or baptism was a matter of law for her. It was, if I don't get this, then I'm maybe not saved, or God doesn't love me, or I don't have X, Y, Z, and therefore I'm not qualified, and this just proves God's displeasure. So she puts all that pressure on herself and is sitting there in fear, and what, if any of us had any clarity about that, we would have tried to help her in the matter of justification, and showing her that her qualification is based only on the blood of Jesus Christ, until you have really settled yourself there you have no business talking about tongues or anything else because it'll all come out I mean you know when you're not saved you misinterpret God's voice it sounds like the screaming voice from Sinai yelling the law with the big trumpet blast and it's terrifying and you want to run and hide but when you're saved, that voice, when you really become in, assured of your salvation, that voice sweetens in its tone to become the confirming witness of the Spirit, that you're a child of God and God loves you. So that's really what we need to keep fortifying, is how do you get saved and assurance of salvation for those who are struggling with the matter of tongues in that realm you know um, and then that should allow Christians who are saved the freedom to talk about the gift of tongues and even pray for people to have it without fearing well if I don't if I pray for this person to get tongues or whatever and they don't get it then they're going to think they're not saved well then what they need is not to avoid the matter of tongues but clarity about salvation that's the problem we are trying to fix uh, the wrong things um, with the wrong medicines I guess you know we say well it's been abused so let's talk about how it should be used no let's not talk about it at all if you're talking to someone who isn't even sure they're saved if they can be abused by someone who says well, if you don't get it, you're not saved. If that actually shakes them, then they need maturity in the area of assurance of faith, not clarity on how the gift of tongues should be used. Because then what happens is you end up stigmatizing it and nobody touches it. And 
and we are spiritually really poor. And you know what? Almost nobody. I mean, this is true. I like my stepson. We should have laid hands on him and given, and but we didn't want to. You know, we didn't want to get into it. It wasn't like that twenty years ago. It wasn't such a big deal in the charismatic circles, at least, who were actually saved and had the gospel right. It was not. We. It wasn't like the Pentecostals where they say you you don't have this. You're not even saved. You need to go down and do the altar call again. Uh, we were at least clear, more clear about justification, you know. But that's really what's happened, is the enemy has tried to confuse justification with almost every truth, so that he can nullify all the truths. Um, Alright, talk to you later.